Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here. Do you ever find yourself just wondering, why can't Tottenham Hotspur be normal? Um, what a week. With everything that's going on in the world, Tottenham Hotspur still managing to make headlines. Um, there is literally no football happening. And Tottenham Hotspur are still front and centre of everything that's going on. And not in a good way. It's been... The PR, public relations week from hell, quite frankly, hasn't it, for the club? They've, oh, so many missteps um, and things that are just painting them in such a bad light, which, as I'll come to later, is a shame in a way because they're doing a lot of good things as well, but they're making some big old, big old missteps. Um, I think we have to start with the most recent stuff. Obviously, everything that happened yesterday, which... Uh, all rather quickly came out in the evening as photos and videos emerged. Um, Jose Mourinho giving a one-on-one, -on -one, it was meant to be, a uh, little kind of session with Tongue on um close to where the, the Frenchman lives. In, a, in an ideal world, without everything that's going on right now, that would be brilliant. You know, everyone would love the fact that um, Mourinho was taking on a player who clearly has had uh, issues this season in, sort of, in terms of adapting, fitness, um, getting what Mourinho wants from him. You know, in a in a perfect world with nothing happening right now, that would be fantastic that the manager, you know, one of the most famous managers in the world, if not the most famous, has gone round to make this guy feel that he is part of staff and he's working with him. This isn't a perfect world right now, though. This is not the time to do that. You know, from everything I was being told yesterday that, you know, social distancing was in practice it, it was all very um it was it was made quite clear that that had to be done uh, apparently two i think it was a couple of other people who weren't connected to spurs turned up and, and wanted to kind of be part of it but things were being observed however and this is what i, I tried to do a twitter thread yesterday which unfortunately various people only kind of took in the first tweet it was it's a thread some twitter users don't seem to understand the thread is allows you to expand on your thoughts. So while I'm saying, in essence, what they were trying, they were attempting to do something that was keeping within stuff, it still was against the guidelines. It utterly was. There's no getting around that. You know, the guidelines are very clear. You can exercise locally, uh, and it has to be with members of your household. Clearly, Mourinho and Ondombele don't live together, although I would watch that documentary if that were the case, but it's not. Um, they're not. So Mourinho went there. There's some people saying, oh, he went from his house in Chelsea. That That's not technically true either. He, he has other houses in London, including one that's a, a bit closer to there. But still, it still isn't something you can do. And this is why we've eventually had the Mourinho apology today, saying, you know, I, I wasn't keeping to the guidelines. And it's as clear as that can be. You know, you don't do that. You know, same with my family and I, whenever we've gone out for a walk with the dogs and stuff like that, it's just been us, um, the household, and, and that's got to be the same way. The other way that, you know, kind of Mourinho would look at it, um, I'm, I'm guessing this is the way he looked at it, is that part of his work allows him to drive. He still drives into Hotspur Way to lead the virtual training sessions that the, the team do. Um, he is allowed to do that. However, I think that's taking it on a slightly, it's taking it, well, a lot, a big wrong turn to then be heading over to where Ondombele lives to do that. It's, I think, misguided is the best way to say it. Um, I think there's a genuine attempt there to, to help someone. You know, we mustn't forget there's, well, we call it, is it's isolating, isn't it? Uh, some of these guys, especially young players, will live by themselves. It's going to be tough for them. But it's just what we've got to do. We've got to do for these, you know, however many weeks it lasts for. It's 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 not a choice now. It's something that we have to do to help out the NHS, to stop those hospitals getting clogged up and stop spreading this bloody thing across, you know, the country and the world. The numbers, obviously, we see them. They're leaping up in the UK. And little things like this, while I can kind of understand the, the logic well, I barely use the word logic. I can understand the thinking of why they thought about doing it, just in practice is a mess. And we know it wasn't just them in terms of doing these daft things. So um, Davinson Sanchez and Ryan Session live in the same complex, apparently in that area. I think it's the... I'm not going to name it. You can go and look and see where it is. I don't want to be the guy that's giving out where people live. But, you know, 
uh, Davison Sanchez and Ryan Sesson live in the same complex. They don't live together, but they live in the same building, as it were, or set of, set of kind of place. Um, they went out for a run, which, you know, you could argue they happen to be going out at the same time, live in the same area. That can happen. However, if anyone's seen the video, there's one video of them going around where they're very close together. And it kind of is destroying the whole point of the distancing. You know, I think if they were doing it, um, I've heard other people saying they were doing it. And it may just be a case that in that moment when the video uh, was taken, they just, for some reason, got a little bit closer together than they should have. Um, and then we've got Serge Aurier. And what it looks like, I could be wrong, but it looks like a personal trainer is, is running right alongside him, videoing him. It was on his Instagram story. Um, you know, Aurier's all masked up and everything. He's running with a mask, but still, it's just the guidelines are really clear. Just, just stick to them. You know, however long it is, if it's four, five, six, seven weeks, whatever this lasts, it, it's just, it's for the good of everyone. I think that that's the the problem with it. Um, I think it's one of those where, as I said earlier, we we kind of we pick on these players for not doing their job. Um, and at the moment, they are trying to keep fit and they're trying to do things like that. But they're young guys, in the case of the players. They're making, you know, slightly daft errors. And, and, and it, unfortunately, a lot of young guys, are, uh, young people, not just young guys, you know, um, you see them out. You see them out and about and kind of still walking around in groups and things like that. And it's just not what we're meant to be doing. I think for Mourinho, while there was um, good intentions in there, I just think for a guy who has been doing so much, you know, don't forget, it was only a week ago we saw him um, helping out doing the, um, it was like the meals and wheels for the needy, wasn't it? I think it was, he was, he was getting involved with, who's doing these great stuff. And uh, from everything I understand is, is, is very keen to do his part for a massively famous figure like himself to be caught doing that. Whether he can claim it's for work related or not, it's not essential. And it just sets a bad example when they're trying to clear out parks of people hanging around in them and, and just, yeah, sends the wrong message, essentially. You know, there's certainly been footballers that we've seen have been doing far dafter things um, in the last week or so, uh, or a couple of weeks, but it doesn't mean this is not still something they're trying to prevent because it's dangerous. It is still dangerous and it can spread stuff. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's right. It's good, it's good that he's come out with the apology. I was, I was hoping it wasn't something that was just going to keep on dragging on and, and just one of those things. And I think it's just, unfortunately, another thing in this bad week for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, before I get into the other stuff that we know is bad, uh, you know, or, or that has had this really kind of negative atmosphere around the club, I obviously want to talk about some of the good things as well, because I don't want this just to be a complete bashing everything that's to do with Tottenham Hotspur, because they have done good stuff. You know, the stadium has been given aside to do um, uh, to, to help with the NHS. Uh, um, I think some kind of food bank, food drive stuff has also been happening there. The club have allowed uh, their doctors to go in and help the NHS as well, be part of that effort. Players have been doing lots of great stuff. Um, Alderweireld, um, certainly know he's been buying up loads of tablets to, to help people with it, kind of what we were talking about earlier about isolation and being able to talk to people and in hospitals as well. Deli Ali's done a load of really good stuff I think, to do with meals. I think his one was. Um, who else? Jan Vertonghen is doing loads of stuff. I'm sure the other, all the other players are doing loads of great things. Danny Rose, um, oh, I know he's at Newcastle, but obviously still a Spurs player. He donated £19,000 to, I think it was, was it North Middlesex Hospital? The one in um, Enfield where he got treatment himself, I think, after his knee injury. Um, and he, so he gave them 19000 The other day he sent them hundreds of pizzas for all the NHS workers. The Spurs and the club are doing really good. They're doing the kind of their part, but unfortunately, everything now has been clouded by this decision to wage cut and furlough. Um, every single story now that is about Tottenham Hotspur is going to have that as the the looming in the background thing, and it's not great, is it? There's no getting around it. You know, we all probably many people, anyone watching this, myself, uh, you know, members of my family. We've all been affected by kind of the financial constraints of what's happening right now. Um, companies are doing wage cuts, companies doing furloughing. Um, I just think when it comes to Tottenham Hotspur, the issue with them, firstly, was the timing. The timing was atrocious in terms of, I got the, the logic, I'm going to use that, overuse that word today, 
but I get the essence of why they did it. You can see that in the statement. They are genuinely concerned financially how much of a hit this is going to be because clubs are going to lose hundreds of millions. Um, for Tottenham, um, you know, Daniel Levy, I, I felt this was too, not aggressive, but is going to leave yourself open to attack if you come out in the way he said it. He said people need to wake up. And he was specifically talking about transfers. People talking about transfers. Um, anyone that's read or listened to my stuff knows that I've kind of been saying this a lot. I've been banging this drum anyway about how financially clubs are going to be stuffed and transfers are not going to be as easy as they were. Understandably, prices are going to have to come down. You know, clubs are not going to be able to ask as much. So you could say that that lowers the market, but... The clubs are going to need that money in the first place. And I think, you know, I think your everyday fan, of course they want transfers and stuff. But I think there's also going to be, they're going to know from their own business and their own work and how they're going to be impacted that financially football is going to be very different after this. Of course it is. It, it can't keep going the ridiculous kind of upward kind of trend it was. It's not going to work anymore. It's just not. Um it was always going to need, it was something was always going to make it go kind of bust, as it were. Um, you know, we've seen clubs that couldn't compete, couldn't keep up. And I think in Tottenham's case, their big fear is obviously they've got enormous loans that they've taken out for the stadium. You know, this is a £1.2 billion stadium complex. And I think they've got loans, I think they're approaching £700 million for it. Um, they've got all of that. Obviously, sponsorship is kind of is going to drop out at the moment, isn't it? Well, I mean, you're not going to sponsor something that isn't visible. Um, it's, 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 it's difficult. It is difficult. I mean, the actual figures is, it's, I think it's 550 non-playing employees that they've reduced eight, uh, 20% off. And that includes the directors, that includes Daniel Levy, people like that as well. Um, also, it's 40% of those of then, I believe, roughly 40% of them being furloughed, um, which is obviously being placed on this, the government relief scheme. And I think this... This is another, you can kind of break it down into two forms of outrage. Uh, one is that a Premier League football club who had their enormous revenues, you know, the biggest profit, I think, in the Premier League, certainly the year before. I'm not sure where the last one was as well. It may well have been. Uh, who were the Champions League finalists are having to use the government scheme. Um, there's different ways of looking at this. You can look at it as the fact that many, many companies across the UK are going to use this with big uh, big companies with rich, very rich men at the top are going to do the same. And you could argue football's being picked out for this slightly. Um, personally, I think my biggest issue, I, I'm not a massive fan of the idea of using the government money. Um, however, I kind of understand in terms of like people use their last financial results. All of that profit has then gone this season on transfers. Um, so, so people saying, oh, they had the biggest kind of profit going. They, they kind of didn't. Now, well, they don't now because in their financial accounts, if you look at it, they also um, looked at the last set of transfers. I think it's called something like after after account spending or something. And even just last summer with um, Ondembele, La Celso loan as it was then, Sessignon, Clark, um, they, even with the incoming from people like Trippier and Janssen, it still ate up more than the profit from the previous season. You'd think a club would still be able to survive. I think this is the biggest issue for me is the 20%. You look at other clubs and any other clubs that are furloughed, obviously Liverpool did it, then reverse a decision. Um, Newcastle, Norwich, Bournemouth, and I understand a lot of other clubs are going to have to go that way because it is, it's, it's difficult for them. Um, we kind of have this thing where we don't have a lot of sympathy for a big multi-million um, or billion in some cases uh, Premier League clubs but a lot of them other than the likes of Cities and Uniteds um, and now Liverpool although they did originally do it are going to have to go this way but I think my biggest issue with the, the whole Tottenham thing apart from timing which we'll come to in a minute was the 20% cut I've just had this issue where I don't I don't like the fact that they're the only club that are doing that Newcastle are going to be like that from I think they're going to pay their staff in full for April, but from May onwards, apparently, they're not currently. It's going to be uh, going down to that 80%. But as Tottenham, there doesn't seem to be any intention to pay that 20%. So all of the staff, many of them, you know, 60% of them are still working, and they're doing it for, for less money. Um, and I don't see how the likes of Crystal Palace can come out and say, we'll make sure none of our 
uh, staff are financially disadvantaged. Uh, Bournemouth have done the same. And Bournemouth financially, I think, are going to really struggle. But they're making that kind of statement that that's going to happen. Uh, Norwich, the same. That bothers me slightly, or quite a lot, really, that the club are not going to even look to make up that 20%. So that's, for 40% of the staff, paying nothing for them. I don't like that. That doesn't sit well with me. The government, using the government relief... I can kind of kind of see it, although I'm not a massive fan of it, and that's because of the ownership, which again is another thing we're going to come to in a second. Um, but just I don't know, I don't like that. It, it sends out a message that the club aren't really, you know. I know they're saying they're doing this to protect jobs in the long term, and a lot of companies obviously are having to do that and say that. But I just feel with a, a club like Spurs. That 20%, especially of the 40% uh, who have been um, furloughed, I can't imagine that's a deal breaker financially. I could be wrong, but for me, it doesn't feel that way. Um, we kind of alluded to it there. The kind of the elephant in the room or the billionaire in the background, I guess, is probably better. Joe Lewis, obviously a guy, um, chap in his 80s, um, who is worth around £4 billion. He's the 355th richest man in the world. And understandably, a lot of focus is coming on the fact that why are a club looking to furlough uh, staff and not pay them 20% of their wages when they have a billionaire in the very top of the pyramid? Spurs fans, really, you'd think, should know from experience that this was never going to be a sugar daddy situation. It just wasn't. Um, Joe Lewis essentially owns the company that owns the company that owns Spurs. He has never in the 20 years of Tottenham Hotspurs ownership uh, by Enoch, um, he's, he's not been the guy that splashed cash. You know, he, as I say, just happens to own a company that owns a company that owns Spurs. It's not a guy directly involved with the running of the football club who says, here you go, you know, I know you want this striker, here's 50 million, go and get him or something. It, it, it's not that set up. I think from the outside, it, it looks like it is. And we know, you know, we know the way things work. We know that paying that 20% would be a nothing, you know, decision. Uh, a, not a nothing decision, but a, 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 a tiniest of kind of pocket change almost. It sounds awful to say. It sounds very, I don't know what the exact word is, but, you know, this whole, you know, you can pay for me attitude kind of thing. But, but in essence, it's a company that, has that financial underpinning. And I think with right now UEFA are saying as well that financial fair play as well, which is something that Spurs have obviously have been a real paragon of doing the right way, but for now it's being relaxed. Um, and obviously I can understand why people would say at this moment, this is the one time you actually can help out all of these people that are working for this company. But it's just never been that way with Joe Lewis. He's not a direct financial influencer into the football club. Um, and I think anyone that's been moaning, and myself included, over the years about transfers not being able to happen because Spurs don't have the financial reserves to do it, kind of can't be shocked now when that money isn't then coming in. But it doesn't make it feel any better. I totally, you know, it, it doesn't sit right. Again, it's another thing. Um, and then we've got Daniel Levy. Daniel Levy, I mean, talk about timing. I mean, the way to do you know, announce your wage cuts is not the morning after you've put in your financial reports that show that your chairman own, earned a £4 million salary and a £3 million stadium completion bonus for last year. Um, because obviously, that looks like he's getting a big £7 million wage uh, windfall as everyone else is losing all of their money. In practice, it's not obviously exactly like that. This was from last year. This was more than a year ago that money would have been taken uh, or got or earned. Obviously, some people will say, you know, how comes he got that bonus for a stadium that was delayed? But it was a bonus that was always going to be done at the completion of the stadium. Um, you know, he, it's not great timing. It's just rubbish. It, it, it's, it's not him getting this massive chunk of cash right now. But it just looks awful. And then obviously that leads people to say, well, that three million bonus, surely that could cover all of the staff's 20 percent and things like that. It's these kind of scenarios make us all very much look at him, what he's got kind of way of, of looking at the world. Um, and I understand it. I understand why people go that way. But I think it's just a whole for me, the biggest thing is the timing, the timing. 
I felt Spurs came out really prematurely in this. Uh, there's a real sense in the club that they've been quite kind of harshly criticised when it comes to this. I think the biggest issue, I think I've pretty much said everything's the biggest issue right now. So, um, but in this case was the timing of it. They came out early. Uh, I think only Newcastle, had, was it maybe only Newcastle had come out? So it looked like Spurs were kind of saying, oh, well, they're doing it, we can do it. But it, there just felt a real underlying sense to it of trying to push the players into their agreement because we know the mass of the expenditure at a football club goes on footballers' salaries. You know, obviously with Tottenham it's slightly different because they've got the enormous outlay on uh, property. All of their money is really is tied up in property. Um, if you look at their accounts, I think it is around £1.2 billion pounds worth is invested in property. I know that's the same number as the stadium complex, but I think it's actually is also various other kind of things they, they uh, hold as well. But yeah, so with the players, it kind of felt like Spurs were going out there. And even Levy referred to it in his statement. You know, he said about, you know, we hope they'll come to an agreement. And it almost felt like they were saying, look, we can't afford to pay 20 spent. You do it. And it's just not as simple as that. I know people at the time then started to get on the players' backs. And they were saying, like, you know, you should be contributing. It shouldn't. And they also started having to go at Spurs and saying, you know, how dare you cut the wages of the non-playing staff when you haven't even done it with the playing staff. We know, and hopefully people understand now, it doesn't work like that. The players are governed in a, in a different way. Their contracts are so locked down. Um, that's why there has to be this more of an understanding with the uh, the PFA. We've got the LMA because it's not just players. It's um, managers and coaching staff and people like that as well. Um, and there's kind of got to be this slightly more group thinking to it because the players are looking to do a lot in this situation. There's no denying that. Other than the silly things they do, you know, some of them are doing, as I said earlier, they're doing some really great things. A lot of money's going towards good causes that really need it right now with the NHS, things like that. Um, but the issue is for them is they want to make sure that if they're going to get their wage cut, it's going to go in the right places. Um, they totally an understanding that the football clubs need to survive. Um, and I do believe that by Spurs going out so early on this, they kind of, if they, I think if they slightly wait, I think you're going to find a lot of other clubs that are in worse financial situations are really going to have to come out and say some stuff soon. Uh, there's a few clubs that have been quite quiet, um, and I think that's because they're waiting and waiting for the storm around Spurs to die down before they do quite similar measures. But the key for the players is they want to know, there's obviously this big issue over if they don't get paid their full wage, then there's a whole PAYE um, and the tax issue and how much the government then gets because then you're taking away say 200 million from the government I think I saw the figures I think something like if they took a 30% pay cut which is what's being mooted then there's something around 500 million would go then back into clubs but then the government would subsequently lose I think it's around 200 million I read um, so the players are saying well let's not do it that way let's do it where we get our full wages but then we donate money towards causes and stuff like that and that can be our clubs but you've got to uh, you know you've got to also understand what to play you know you want to you want to be contributing so you are playing your part in helping players uh, so players other employees at the club lower down the, the ladder who earn less and really you know really need that money to survive um, but you don't want to be paying say I don't know for transfers in the summer um, you know, a guy doesn't want to give up his salary so that he can be replaced in a couple of months' time or, or the next transfer window. It's, it's such a, a mess of a situation. That's why it's taken a while. And it's kind of giving off this sense that players don't want to get involved and help, which they really do. Um, I know there's a number of them that really, really want to help and get involved and, and managers and head coaches as well. But it's just, it's getting the right balance. And they really don't want players to make individual deals with clubs and then find themselves a bit stuffed because there's also levels of players, levels of salaries, and who earns what, and you know, do you impose the same kind of thing on those massive earners as you do yet some young kid, I don't know, let's say Oliver Skip or uh, Jaffet Tanganga or someone lower down that isn't earning as much and um, and they don't have as much money to play with. It's it's such a complicated situation, but it's gonna, something's going to have to need to happen soon because we're seeing Liverpool have obviously reversed their decision on furloughing, which was the right thing to do. They were getting so much flack. I think Spurs probably breathed a big sigh of relief when Liverpool came out and did it originally, um, but then saw exactly how much flack. It didn't matter that it was Liverpool had built up goodwill with the Premier League, winning Champions League fight. It didn't matter. They were absolutely getting slated. Um, so for them to reverse a decision, I think has absolutely put everyone's eyes back on Spurs. And 
Now they need to kind of work out going forward because I think I understand the Spurs employees will get paid, I think it's at the end of every month. So there is still time for something to happen. Spurs obviously will be hoping it's the players play their part. But obviously um, the players won't be just looking to bail out clubs that bring in a lot of revenue. This is probably the best way to do it. Maybe not so much the profit, it's the revenue. Um, but we know football is so fragile right now. Um, it's it's a... Uh, that does normally bring in enormous money, but it's, it's essentially, I think someone used the analogy the other day, it's just the tap's been turned off. So that money is not coming in, you know, if they don't complete the season, there's enormous financial pressure of over a billion pounds that has to be paid back in TV revenue and sponsorship uh, between the clubs. Um, the Premier League itself are open to so many issues, so that they have to complete the season, but it's just when they can eventually complete the season. And this kind of bridging almost between when that happens is when the finance is going to be a mess and even when it does complete if they play behind closed doors you're losing revenue in um, gate receipts um, and obviously uh, sponsorship isn't going to be seen quite as much oh, there's so many different aspects to it um, but it needs to be and I do I feel a little bit sorry for like the Spurs social media guys who you know I know a few of them and they put out all this really good content they have to be really creative and original during this time when there's nothing really to work with and obviously everything they're doing is, is getting met with pay the staff, pay the staff, pay the staff. And I think the staff themselves will probably appreciate the support. Um, however, the flip side is these guys that are working on 80% to try and be incredibly creative, you know, not getting all their full wages, and they know everything they're doing isn't being appreciated by the public. But I get it. I get, I get why it's happening. And I'd hope that they appreciate why it's happening as well and that people are kind of sticking up for them. But it's just been such a bad look. It really has. It's it's just it's one of those where I think you need a resolution soon, though, because the more it drags on, the more things like anything that goes wrong at Spurs is only going to be highlighted. I mean, we saw the stuff about gardeners, um, gar uh, gardeners, kind of greensmen, uh, groundsmen. Sorry, at Spurs training ground are possibly going to be used at Daniel Levy's private grounds and stuff. And I kind of read that story, and there's a part of me that kind of feels that there's possibly some good intentions in there somewhere uh, in that I presume he would be paying full wages rather than 80% and I think it would come out of his own pocket so it would be helping those involved but because of everything else that's going on around Tottenham Hotspur and an absolute PR nightmare they're having it just kind of gets mixed up in this absolute oh my god he's even using them on his own estate and, and I can understand why people are saying that because it just gives this overall picture of a club that aren't looking to help their staff when I think deep down they kind of are They've just made an absolute hash of the way they've gone about it. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to, you know, we've waffled on long enough about that. It, it's a situation that needs a quick conclusion. I know that's not an easy thing to do, but I think um, certainly for the sake of the staff at Spurs, it's, it's rubbish to see so many hardworking people not getting their full pay for what they do. And, and I know we see this across everyone at the moment. We're all... We're all experiencing that right now, um, but I just hope there's a conclusion to it because we need to get out of what's going on right now. It's a really tough time for everyone, and I think we need to treat everyone in the best way we can. Um, in other news, away from that, uh, Sonny has gone off to South Korea, which was originally personal reasons, but we soon learned that it's actually he's going to go and do his military service which is actually quite a bright thing among all this in that he's obviously South Korea's experience if you've seen the figures they've really got much more of a handle so far on what's happened um, and so for him he can kind of use this time to do this four weeks um, I know some people said why is he exempt from military sorry why isn't he exempt from military service because he won the Asian Games that exempt him from um, doing two years of service in the military uh, however he still has to do his four weeks basic training, which is going to happen, which if you've read some of the stuff he's going to do, is quite involved. He is, you know, this is not going to be uh, very much for the cameras kind of thing. He is going to have to do some proper, um, you know, military. I think it may be the Marines he's possibly he's got to do his stuff with. Uh, I think it starts at the end of the month, maybe April 20th, and it'll be three to four weeks. Um, and he's going to get a hell of an experience out of it. Um, I'll give him that. But yeah, timing wise, it's about the best bit of timing that's actually happened with Tottenham Hotspur right now. Um, he's going to get that out of the way and he's going to be able to get on with his career and he's going to do something that his country, you know, the country people really look well upon. You know, you're doing your national service. It's a real thing of pride over there. Um, I remember when he was 
people were talking about him trying to get out of it. It was such a touchy subject. He would never talk about that because that would be quite a dishonour back home to do that. But anyway, so that's going to be done. And another player, a player from the past, which obviously we heard about late last night, Jimmy Greaves um, in hospital. Currently, as I'm kind of filming this video, we haven't heard any updates yet, but I think that was due to come quite soon. Hopefully we hear some positive news. It's, it's not believed to be coronavirus related. Um, and obviously we know um, the legend that is Jimmy Greaves has been having a really tough time over the last, was it four or five years? I think it was a stroke he had, wasn't it? A really big, a massive stroke. And, and obviously we, we've seen the way he has. He's been back to the training ground. I remember he met Harry Kane. Um, and this obviously is never a good thing. Hopefully we hear some positive news on that because utter, utter legend. We, we bandy the word uh, legend about too easily. Um, but Jimmy Greaves, if you're not aware of him, if you're a younger fan, look up his goal scoring records, appearances and goals. If you think Harry Kane's are ridiculous, look at Jimmy Greaves, absolute legend of the game. I'm very aware that having done uh, this kind of quick update, I say quick as he goes over the half hour mark, it's not um, exactly what I'd, I think I'd originally said in the last one. I was going to do another Q&A. Don't worry. If you ask questions in the last one, those will be carried over. I'm going to do a and a maybe at the weekend, possibly. Um, and any questions you want to put under this video, I'll try my best to answer them as well. I just felt that in the last six, seven days, Tottenham Hotspur had just done so many things, good and bad, unfortunately, mostly bad in the eyes of, of the public. I thought we had to have a little chat about it. So, um, But I will get around to your questions. I will. Lots of really good ones. And hopefully if you stick a load more under this, uh, we'll have a bit of a bumper one at the weekend. Uh, so yeah, stay safe, everyone. We'll stick to the guidelines. Hopefully we'll all be through this soon. We'll have our football back and we'll have our lives back. And uh, we can get on with the way things were. It'll be a bit different. Not quite the way things were. But hopefully we'll come out the other side and uh, get to do the things we, we love doing again. I shall catch you later.